Just talk us through how impressed you've been with the side this season. Obviously, we've just mentioned there that they've, they've made it into this season's playoff final, but they've kind of had a bit of a, a renaissance, haven't they, going from near enough playoff, uh, sorry, relegation candidates last season to, to playoff finalists this season. Yeah, it's, it's been a it's been an unbelievable turnaround. I think this sort of started the back ends of last season, and um, they just really sort of kicked on this season. And I've, I've been lucky enough to to get back to a few games this season and, and just see the sort of turnaround really in the place and and, and the players they brought in. The recru- recruitment side of it has been sort of spot on. The players they brought in have have helped sort of improve the group and and really, like I say, just sort of bring everybody together. And they've been on a fantastic run and. Unfortunately, the sort of pandemic brought, brought that sort of season to an end in terms of, I think if it had continued, they would have gone on and got all the promotion. So um, it's always difficult to know what to expect after that many sort of months off and, and not being able to play. So um, they obviously took off where they, where, where they were last, at the uh, end of the sort of season where it finished. So um, they've done brilliantly well to, to secure that promotion um, final game and, and, and hopefully they go and, and get what they've deserved this season, really. What have you thought of Carl Robinson? Obviously, the man in charge at the moment. He's somebody who's got a lot of experience within the, the football league. He's won promotions with a couple of different clubs. Obviously, very unlucky with his time at Charlton; it just didn't work out for him. But he's somebody that Oxford seem to have taken into their hearts, and, and he's given back in abundance, really, hasn't he? Yeah, I, 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 I came back. I think last season for um, a talk, and, and a lot of the fans were sort of questioning whether. He should be in charge. They're, they're on a bad run, and I just remember at the time saying, "Look, he's a he's a, he's a top manager. He's, he's managed top clubs, and he, he's done a fantastic job." So I just sort of pleaded with him really to sort of stick by and and um, and sort of back him because it was like I say they were going for a tough time. They were sort of in the sort of bottom half of the table, and everybody's expecting sort of them to be challenging, and, and it doesn't always work out like that. So I, I think they had sort of a few injuries and. and people were missing from the team that would normally be playing and like I say I just remember saying to them look he knows what he's doing he's a good manager and every time we came came up against any of his teams when I was there it was always a, a tough game and, and um, like I say I, I just said look he's one of those managers that will will get it right and he, he, he obviously went on that season to sort of turn it around and, and get him back at the table and then obviously this season to kick on and, and do what they've done and get themselves into a great position now just is testament to sort of his hard work and, and the staff and the players that they've got at the football club. You just talked about it there as well and another team in the division who some teams might not have expected or a lot of fans might not have expected to make it to this far up the table and then to the playoff final is Wickham Wonder is Monday's opponents for Oxford. Just talk to us a little bit about them. How impressed have you been by Gareth Ainsworth's side this season? They've again very similar to Oxford. They've they've sort of been up and down, like they've had up and down sort of times in, the, especially in the season. But again, every time we played them when I was at Oxford, it was it was always a tough game. And I think Gareth's been there so many years, and he, he knows the club inside out. And again, the recruitment side and, and and how they go about their business, like bringing in Bayo, I think a lot of people sort of question whether that was a good move or not. And then like I say, he comes in, and every time he plays or every time he, he he's on the pitch, he makes it difficult. And, They've got they've got good players obviously all over the park, but um, they've got the, sort of the right balance. And obviously, it being a little bit of a derby as well makes it sort of a little bit special. And um, obviously, I feel a little bit for the players and, and the fans that obviously can't be there. But I'm sure that the players are going to be focused on on the game and, and getting the result that they're hoping will will achieve. Obviously, Championship football. What do you think to some of the, the playing squad uh, in the Oxford side? Obviously, you've got the two strikers. Uh, Henry and uh, Matty Taylor, who obviously played both play in your position when you were at the club, they've got 25 league goals between them. And you've got the, the centre-half, Dickie, and the goalkeeper, Eastwood. They all seem to be of championship quality, to say the least. Yeah, I'd like I say, I, I, how they performed. Matty, was, Matty Taylor was there when I was at the club first time. He was, uh, he was only sort of a youth team then. And sort of coming through, you could tell he had something about him, but... I think at the time, the, the, the sort of position we were in, obviously we were striving to, to get back into the football league and obviously to, to take risks on sort of young lads probably wasn't seen as, as sort of beneficial. So it was difficult for him. And like I say, he's gone away and, and he's done really well. Same as Eastie. Eastie was there, uh, Eastwood, the keeper, was there when, when I was there. And again, for him to sort of nail down that first team spot was difficult. And he obviously went away and played at Blackburn and just really proved himself and, and showed what, what they were capable of doing. And 
it's great now to see them both back at the club and um, like I say that the spine of the team is, is, is oozes quality and obviously with Dickie and Moore and, and all across the back four they've shown what they're capable of sort of doing this season both of the semi-finals were both incredibly tight games not much in it and like I say I'm sure the final will be no different Whatever the result may be on, on Monday whether it is a, a promotion winning season or it's one that just misses out by the skin of the teeth it just shows that Oxford are continuing to build year on year doesn't it and, and that they're there now in a position where they can compete whether it is in the, the champion, championship next season or in League One again Yeah from Obviously, our time when we were there, like we obviously got promoted in in 2010, and I, I think if if you'd asked anyone, sort of 10 years on, we'd be we'd be facing sort of 90 minutes away from the championship. I don't think anyone would have believed it, and and, and the way the club's turned around just in that short amount of time um, is is unbelievable, and, and it's testament really to to everybody at the club and the hard work they have put in. And I'm sure the players would be desperate to to go out there and, and get that club into the championship, which is obviously what everybody at the club, the fans, the players, everybody, the staff would love to see happen. Before we move on to that famous 2010 playoff final victory, we'll just talk about how you, you ended up getting uh, in the building at Oxford. I think you, you came on loan from Shrewsbury, if my research is correct. You, you spent yeah. a little bit of time on loan there before you made it a permanent deal. Was that a big step for you going to a club like Oxford and then obviously further on down the line then you, you made the bold move in, in signing there permanently? Yeah, I, I said recently, like just in terms of my career, I'd obviously played non-league at Chippenham and then signed for Warsaw and an unbelievable opportunity and didn't quite work out and manager left and, and then I, I dropped down to Kidderminster um, again, sort of back into the conference and then back up to sort of League Two with Shrewsbury and, and then obviously I sort of took the move to drop back to non-league with Oxford. So it was a, a stage of my career, 23-24, I was desperate to to really lay down a marker and show what, what I was capable of doing. I knew I could go out and score goals and I'd, I'd done that through my career. But at that age, I wasn't a kid anymore. I'd, uh, people had sort of knew my name and it was it was really important for me to go there and, and really sort of prove what I was capable of doing. And unfortunately, like I said, they, they took a sort of chance on me bringing me in on loan and um, unfortunately lost the manager just before sort of the Christmas period. And Chris obviously took over, Chris Wilder, and, I say the club's fortunes pretty much overnight turned around, and and we went on a fantastic run that season. But just to be part of that and and, and part of what what he was about and what his ideas were, I was desperate to to sign for as long as I could to be a part of, of where the club was going. Well, that was my next question. Really, a lot. I think a lot gets lost, especially from where Chris Wilder is now. That people don't remember where his first background came from. I know he, he managed a club before. He came to Oxford, but that's where we really started to see the Chris Wilder, a manager that is continually getting the best out of players and bringing a club up a division. And that started with Oxford and with yourself being there, as you said. Yeah, I think when he first came, I don't think many we'd heard of the name, and I think he had come come in from Halifax, but we didn't really know too much about what he was going to be about and and how he was going to set us up. Or especially when you're in that position, you're sort of bottom half of the table. You think, is it going to be? So someone come in long balls back, like especially for a centre forward. We just didn't know what what to expect. But like I say, he just came in and and it was a real sort of breath of fresh air, and and everybody sort of chins were on the ground a little bit with with the way the season was going. But instantly, overnight, almost like I say, we we got a, a feeling for what it was going to be like, and everybody bought into that. And it just like I say, overnight, it just completely changed, and, and our attitudes really sort of turned around. And we went on a fantastic run that season. And if it wasn't for I think we had a points deduction towards the end of the season. If it, if it wasn't for that, I'm pretty sure we'd have sort of made the playoffs and, and probably gone up that year. But as it was, we we, we had to wait another year. And like I say, I signed an, a, a three-year deal that summer. Um, and like I say, we we managed to go out the, the next season with a full season with, with Chris in charge and get the job done. So it's probably fair to say then that it hasn't surprised you how well he's gone on to do in, in his career, obviously just on the outskirts of Europe now with Sheffield United. No, I think when he left Oxford and, and obviously went to Northampton, I think it was everybody knew that that he was desperate to be successful and, and desperate to, to to manage at the highest level, which is no different to obviously playing. We're exactly the same as players. We want to play at the very top level. So um, for him, it was he, he saw it as an opportunity to go there and obviously did the job there. So it was just a, a continuation of, of what we expected from him as a manager. And um, obviously going to Sheffield United in League One, I don't think. 
again, any of the fans would expect it sort of two, three years on for them to be in the Premier League, but let alone ch- challenging for that sort of European place is, is phenomenal with the, with the team that are sort of 78 percent of the same players that are playing in League One is, again, testament to, to what he's able to do as a manager and as a, as a coach. As we talked about, you, you're no stranger to winning promotion, obviously, with Oxford United as well. Can you talk us through some of the main points of that 2010 season where you went up, just by the playoff final at the moment, but I think you got 26 goals in 44 league appearances that year. Obviously, it's a nice stat to, to look back yeah. on, but obviously, the, the bigger picture was getting that playoff final spot and then achieving promotion that year as well. Yeah, well, that was that was the aim, I think, from... The first week of pre-season, we had meetings and, and we went away and, and that was our focus, was promotion. We, we didn't really consider anything else. It wasn't, we didn't want to get in the playoffs. We didn't want to have a, a, a season where we built on what what we'd done last year. It was literally the, the sole aim was promotion. And we started fantastically well, got ourselves in a brilliant position. And around Christmas time, I think we, we managed to sort of have three or four games that were called off. And Stevenage managed to play their games and get their wins. And I think a 12th, 14, 15 point gap between us and Stevenage was was soon sort of closed up and they overtook us and they were fantastic that year. They were just relentless and um, every time we sort of, we would win, we'd look and they would have won by, by a goal more and they just give us no time and as it was, like I say, they overtook us and we managed to sort of get into the playoffs at the end of the season but I think it was always the promotion in our back of the head was, was, was that was what we wanted to do whether it, it, we had to do it through the playoffs or not. We were going to want to get promotion so once we the sort of dream of, of going up automatically was taken away then then that was we sort of switched our focus really to then get in the playoffs finish the season as well as we could and it was only recently we had a 10-year reunion and we we sort of found out that that Chris and the chairman had spoke about playing the team that was going to play in the final at Wembley the last probably I think it was sort of seven or eight games of that season so that was already their thought process in, in terms of where they where they knew we were going to finish they were already planning on on getting that team sort of gelled and, and ready for that playoff game that, that like I say, is, is almost just a one-off really, but we were going to get in the best shape we could. And as a manager, he was going to make sure that everybody knew their roles ready for, for that one game that, that was the most important of the season, really. Those two playoff semi-finals and you, you played Russian Diamonds. You, you scored in both of those semi-final legs as well. Did it just feel like everything was starting to click into place for you personally as well? Obviously, getting the goals that, that takes the team into the playoff final and, and then subsequently that you go on to beat York in the final. You scored again in that one. It was a, a playoff campaign to remember on a personal level as well as a, a whole team level as well. Yeah, I think like you say there, mention the team. It, that, looking back, I, I don't think I've played in a team since I had that that sort of character, that togetherness. We we were we spent a lot of time together, not not just obviously training and, and match days, but away from the club. We there was probably seven or eight of us living together in one house and we'd finish training, go and have sort of shop, go and do a bit of shopping together, go and get some lunch. Like we, we were just constantly together. And I think like I say, I've, I've, I've not been in, a, in amongst sort of that team spirit in many teams I've been in. And I think if it, if it wasn't for that, we, we probably wouldn't have got the results we did because we were um, just so well sort of knitted together as a group that, that it made the difference when, like I say, top of the league and then slipping out of the playoffs altogether, back in the playoffs, it takes some sort of character and togetherness to be able to turn that round and, and stay focused and get the job done. So it's a massive part of, of what we did that season. And obviously for me, I was felt unbelievably lucky to be in, in such a good team. Talk us through from a player's perspective then, what's it like, the euphoria around the playoff final, uh, the day leading up to it. Some people say that the, the game is the easiest part in a certain respect to how nervous they are in the build-up and everything that's going on around it. It seems like a bit of a whirlwind and then all of a sudden, at, in a normal day, it's Saturday at three o'clock, for example, it's you're kicking a ball around for 90 minutes and you, you don't really remember what's gone on before it. All, all that matters is the game. Yeah, I think, like I say, the build-up, we, we obviously got through that semi-final and I think, I think we had probably, I think, something like 13 days between that and the final. So it was a long time to sort of stay focused and we obviously had a lot of training in between that. But it just seemed like a million miles away from where we, we obviously got through that. And we obviously, I think we went up to Wembley two, two days before. And I think that was massively important. I'd been there in 2007 with Kidderminster and we, we I'd scored two that day and we were two at half time and we ended up losing three, two. So I'd sort of done that walk three years previously to, to pick up a loser's medal. And 
it was something that sort of played on my mind, especially going back there. That was the first time, obviously, I've been back since then and to walk around. And, and I was just, I remember the sort of night before the game, I was desperate not to have that feeling again, all those feelings come back of, of that disappointment. It took a long time to get over that. And um, obviously going back there in, in 2010, I was desperate to, to make sure that didn't happen again. And, and I'm, I'm very fortunate that we managed to get the job done on the day and, and sort of get rid of those demons that I had from 2007. A lot of people over their space of their career won't get the chance to play at Wembley for whatever reason. But you've not only played at Wembley, you've scored on a few occasions as well. What's that like? Is that some of the proudest moments of your your, your career scoring there, despite the result the first time round? But obviously, you bettered that in two thousand and ten. Yeah, definitely. I think as a kid growing up, I was unfortunately never got the chance to go to the old Wembley. But obviously, you see it on TV, and obviously, you're ninety six. We saw the games played there, and. I think just for, for a player, that's always your your sort of your, your dream is to play at the national stadium, and, and obviously it's such an iconic one as well. Um, to go there in two thousand and seven was, like I say, an unbelievable achievement achievement for, for Kidderminster to get to get to the final. But um, like I say, it was that was a sort of cup competition. So to go back and and obviously with Oxford, it mean the difference between playing in in one league or being back in the football league. Obviously, we knew how important that was for the fans and for the club. Um, it was massive for whether they could sort of continue to, to keep going. I think, it, again, something we found out at the reunion um, a few months ago was, was it, it was get, starting to get sort of critical for the club that, that they got back into the Football League just for the finances and, and, and for where the club wanted to be. So, um, obviously, luckily for us, we didn't know too much about the issues that were sort of going off the pitch. I think it would have heaped a load more pressure on us. But for, for us as players, we were just focused on, on going out there, doing the job. and. Um, we were so so well drilled, drilled from Chris and everything. I think, like I say, that a lot of the game just sort of blurs out as we were so focused on what we had to do. It was, it was you look back and there's so sort of large chunks of the game you you almost don't remember because we were just so focused on what we had to do. But um, yeah, walking up the steps to pick up the trophy and and like I say, celebrate was was something I'll never forget. As you mentioned there, I think it was four years exile for Oxford out of the football league. You got back in it, and then it kind of took a bit more of a personal aspect for you. Then, as you you sported the captain's armband for a bit as well, didn't you? During that time in the EFL, what was that like for you? Yeah, it was obviously halfway through the uh, the, the promotion season. Adam Murray was, I think, he's like assistant and uh, at Barnsley now. Um, he had had sort of a bit of a back injury, and he tried to come back. And it just kept recurring. So, um, I think it was just yeah, around Christmas time, they he said, "Look, that's that's me. I don't think I can sort of carry on." And, um, I remember sort of Chris pulling me and said, "Look, I'm going to make you sort of captain for the remainder of the season." And obviously, to to be part of Oxford was a was a, a, a proud moment for me. But obviously, to be given sort of the the captain's armband in, in whatever circumstances was a was again a, a massive sort of highlight of my career. So to, to to then sort of go for the remainder of the season and and, and play as well as we did and, and get ourselves in that that promotion final. I remember obviously walking out with the players and, and meeting all the dignitaries and going down the line, introducing the players was just such a proud moment for me. I had all my family at the game and I knew it was on sort of TV. So it was just, like I say, something I'll never forget. I was so privileged to be sort of a captain of, of, of the group, but we had so many captains all over the pitch. It, it was, like I say, it could have been a number of people that were given the, the, the captain's armband. I think the experience we had and the leaders we had sort of made sure that, that on that day we got the result. Obviously, all good things must come to an end as they inevitably do. You, you mm. obviously finish just one goal shy of the, the re- breaking the record. Is that something that you look back on with a little bit of uh, not? I wouldn't say anger to say the least, but a little bit of thing where you think you know what? Been nice to to break that record. Yeah, again, with, I obviously scored a hat trick against Chester as well, which was chalked off when when they obviously went into administration and, and went so. At the time, it didn't seem that important, but then obviously, as you go through the, the sort of time that I was there, and, and then obviously getting my hundredth, and I knew I was sort of seven away, and I just slowly sort of ticking them them goals off and getting down. As a as a striker, you, you want to break records, you want to be the top goal scorer, you want to be the person that that people look up to, and, and stuff like that. So for me, it was disappointing to leave sort of one guy one goal short, but then sort of uh, as time goes by, it, it sort of. It, like I say, it's there. I know it's there, and, and and I would have loved to have left as the all-time top scorer. But to to be in amongst the names that that obviously are, and and Graham obviously being the the, the top goal scorer, and 
um, obviously Aldridge and players that have been massive players that have been at the football club for me to to leave in amongst those names is, is a fantastic honour and I would have loved to have got that record but to be sort of one shy of it and to be over 100 goals for the club that that gave me the opportunity to, to do what I did I'm, I'm very proud that, that I managed to achieve that. I take it by the, the tone of uh, your voice and the way that you've, you've answered some of the questions this uh, afternoon you'll be firmly fixed into the TV come Monday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I managed. I managed to miss the second final, the uh, second semi final, the uh, the playoffs. I had a UA, I'm doing my UEFA B course at the minute, and obviously with the current sort of situation, we can't get in and, and do the coaching we normally would. So um, a lot of our sessions are online, and unfortunately, it just so happened that it fell at, at seven o'clock on on the day of the the second leg of the semi final. So I missed it, but um, I had it playing in the background, so I was, kept sort of leaning back on my chair trying to listen to what was going on. So. I've made sure Monday I'm, I'm available. I'm not taking any calls. The phone's going to go off and, and I'm going to sit and enjoy it and, and, and watch it with the rest of the family. Sticking a, a retro Oxford shirt on by any chance? I've actually got my... Uh, I'm up in Newcastle seeing family as well. So I've managed to to unzip the, the final uh, Oxford uh, final shirt from, from my collection. I've got that with me. So I'll uh, I'll be pulling that on on Monday, hoping it'll bring me a bit of good luck. 